The surgical dermal lesion simulated tissue is designed to replicate a number of different dermal lesions, uh, including some skin tabs and moles, and in this case they're designed to be used for biopsies and excisional biopsies. So if we look here at the pad, we have a number of different disease processes, if you will. So some small uh, moles, some larger moles here, some skin tabs. And there's lots of different things that we can do with this pad. So I really encourage you to practice them all to see how they work. So for instance, you can come in with the skin tab, do a local anesthesia around it. Then you can pick up the skin tab and then just work with your scissors, so extend it and cut it off and you can see that the, the dermis is deep enough that like most skin tabs you don't get down into the deeper tissue uh, or you can practice taking a little bit more so coming up a little bit higher and working on that and working your way through with your scissors and in that case you can see that we got all the way down through the epidermis and you could practice actually putting a suture in that so uh, we'll do that at the end Another option with these is to use a biopsy punch. Uh, so we can come in at the edge of a mole. So in this case, we're trying to get the, uh, a good biopsy, which will include some normal tissue as well as the abnormal tissue. So we'll take the biopsy punch, twist it as we work our way down to get down through the epidermis. And then uh, we're going to come back in with our thumb forceps, lift that area up, that we have biopsied and come in and get the subcutaneous level with that. Then you can see here that we've got a good biopsy with some normal tissue here and some of the abnormal tissue so that it gives you an idea of whether or not there's been any penetration of the disease tissue throughout. So that's another one of the options that we can do. Uh, these are designed that if you have a big enough punch you can actually come through and remove the entire mole itself. So in this case we've done that and we can look and say well we didn't get quite everything so we either need a bigger punch or we can come in and use our biopsy to take out a little bit more of the tissue there. So again these are really designed for you to practice all the different kinds and techniques that you might consider from a biopsy perspective. This little bit larger one in the corner here works very nicely for doing an excisional biopsy. So in this case, what we're going to do is go re reposition our pad a little bit and we're going to make a plan to do an elliptical incision around the mole here, uh, getting down through the skin. So we're going to come to the side, leave a little bit of normal tissue because we want to get rid of the entire mole. Come back to the side there. So we've got a good incision there. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. Work our way down and around. So when you do excisional biopsies, you end up taking more tissue. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people like to do just the, the biopsies with just the, the biopsy instrument. But in this case, we're going to close it and it will close better if we do an elliptical or fusiform incision than if we did just a round incision. So we, now that we've got the surface areas, we're going to work our way down and you can appreciate that I'm working all the way down into the subcutaneous tissue here to get this because we want to make sure that when we do our biopsies that we're getting deep tissue as well, otherwise we're probably going to leave behind suspect disease tissue or in this case possible melanoma or neoplasia. So here we go, we've got a nice deep biopsy. The sub-Q tissue allows us to do that. We've removed all of the melanoma and now it comes time to go ahead and close that. To close it, we can use some 3-0 um, monofilament nylon. In this case, on a reverse cutting needle. If there was a lot of tension, you might go a slightly larger uh, suture material, but this should work fine. For looking at the basics of the suture patterns, go ahead and check out the suture pads. The, the one layer pads will give you an example of the simple interrupted, simple continuous 
as well as tension relieving patterns. Because there's a fair amount of tension here in it, I'm going to go ahead and use a tension relieving pattern in the middle. One of my favorites is the near far far near. You could use a vertical mattress as well. So for the near far far near, we take the first bite close to the edge of the tissue. And then the next bite on the, on the far side is going to be a far bite. So we're going to come a long ways away from the cut edge of the tissue. And the reason I really like the near far far near pattern is that it's very straightforward to perform. All you have to do is be able to say the processes. So near, far, and then the next one is far, and they're all in line. So the nice part about this suture pattern as well is that everything is in line and everything is forehanded. So we don't have to worry about doing a backhand suture. So we can pull this through. And then the final one is near. So a near, far, far near, and we pull that together. Now it's just a matter of using a square knot. So we should be able to get by with a straightforward square knot. We'll bring the first bite down and that will come loose a little, but nylon will tighten on the next one very nicely. So we place the second one. See, it's a nice square knot. And we tighten that down and we work our way slowly until we oppose the skin in the middle. Because we've removed a fair amount of tissue, it's going to cause this pad to buckle. That's normal. And then we're going to finish the suture by finishing our square knot. Ortho square knot should be plenty in this case. And we're going to cut these long because it's in the skin. And we're going to come back and remove those later. Now there's a number of options that we can use to finish closing this. Uh, one of those would be to do another near far far near where there's still a bit of gapping here. Or we can try this with just a simple interrupted suture pattern. So we'll try that and see how easy that brings things together. And if it doesn't, we can always replace it with a tension relieving suture. So come in here, simple square knot. And when we tighten this down on the second throw, notice that we can still get that with minimal tension. So that's going to work just fine. And then in order to close this up, four throws to finish that up. Then I think if we were going to complete this suture pattern, we would just go ahead and do an additional uh, interrupted on either side of this one, and then probably two to three interrupted on the other side as well. Remember that first skin tab that we removed and we got down through into the subcutaneous tissue. This is one we talked about closing. So this one we don't need to close. This one I think closing would be good and we can probably close that with a single simple interrupted. So if we bring that into the side. Here, because it's more of a round incision, it will pucker a little on the ends. And I think your patient will appreciate having you close that as opposed to letting it go through second intention healing. So again, a single uh, interrupted suture pattern should bring that together quite nicely. And again, if you don't like that, you can always put two in there. So it gives you a chance to practice, see what you're doing, encourage you to try things. Prep, put one in and see if it works. And if it doesn't, put a second one in uh, or, or go ahead and start with two. Whatever you want to do, this is the time for you to practice that. And what's really fun about this particular suture pad is that if you look at that and say, I don't like the fact that it uh, that, that I put just the one interrupted in and I want to put a couple of patterns in, you can take that suture out and, and now you can replace that with two interrupteds or a cruciate pattern in order to close that up. So just to show you how that works, we've got here the uh, interrupted that we took out. We didn't quite like the way that was closing. So we're gonna come here and I'm gonna put a cruciate in here. I like cruciates in these situations. And you could remember that when we were doing the symbol interrupted, that we had just a little bit of gapping on each end. But now that we put the cruciate in, look how nicely that opposes the entire length of the incision. So you can see that if we don't like it, we take it out and place another one. And we can take this one out and place another one as well. So it's one of the benefits of using this particular suture pad to practice doing the dermal lesions.